Well, good evening. Hey, I want to ask you a question. If you were told you had, this is your last night to live, okay? Hopefully you'd be in church, that'd be good. But if you were told this was your last night to live, how would you worship God here? I want to be known as a worshiper, do you? I want to go out with a bang when I go out. I want to worship God with my whole heart, my mind, my soul. Well, I'm not going to wait till I get bad news like that. <laughs> I'm going to do it right now, because we can, because it's a privilege and because it's an honor. So I want to encourage you tonight. Don't hold back. There's no reason to. You're in a good place. You're in a safe place where we can just be like David and just let loose in the Lord. Come on, let's stand up and bless our God. He's worthy. Come on, give him a praise offering. Give him a clap offering. Give him a clap offering that he is worthy of. He's so good. He's so wonderful.
kicking right out of Romans. I don't want to abuse it, Lord. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Come on, sing it. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it. Like the sound of a symphony in my ears. It's like holy water, your forgiveness. It's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. It's like the sound of a symphony in my ears. It's like holy water. You're so faithful. You're so faithful, Lord. Your love is like radiant diamonds bursting inside us. We cannot contain. Your love will surely confine us that blazing wildfire singing your name. Oh, let's sing that again. Come on. Your love is
Come on, somebody bless the Lord in this place. Oh God, you're worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Imagine what's happening in the heavenlies now as we worship our God. Come on, do it. Bless him. You are worthy, Lord God. Worthy of all glory and honor and praise. We exalt you. We exalt you, Jesus. It's all because of our Jesus. You, Lord God, you paid the price.
your hands up and worship him. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Praise Him. <laughs> Praise Him. Lift you up. I exalt you. Oh, my Lord. Who's that in the highest? Oh, bless you, Lord. I'd like to qualify what I'm going to say today um, of the situation that I had today. The, um, an encounter with a Hispanic man that lived down the street. Probably illegal. Um, I'm not sure, sure of that, but but um, God revealed to me that my heart was crusted, that my political views had limited my ministry so much that I couldn't minister to this man. And uh, we talked, it came out good. But it was pretty intense at first, and, and not because of anything other than we didn't know each other and we didn't understand each other, you know. And how many opportunities do we miss because of our bias and our prejudice? Amen. I, there's certain things I believe politically, but you get so encrusted and that you can't minister and you can't minister effectively. You can't see in the spirit effectually. Amen. But the Lord says that I've come to challenge the status quo. And that the Lord says, if you want to change, then do something different. And the Lord took me to the word rend. And I, you know, Barry and all these scholars probably know what that means. But I looked it up and it, it's really amazing because I think it's what God's doing. The Lord says there's a double grace in this season. It's a, it's a double grace to get to change things, to rearrange things. But it's like the man at the pool of the Bethesda that you have to get in when the grace is extended. Amen. This is an exceptional, special time in the spirit of Kairos time where God is, not that God doesn't answer prayer always, but there's just some supernatural times that things are changed. Amen. But the word rend means to separate any substance into parts with force or sudden violence, to tear asunder, to split as powder rends a rock, as a lightning rends an oak. And I've experienced that 
when the spirit of repentance would come and strike my heart to change my thinking. Amen. And that may sound cruel, but it's how God rolls. Amen. So, Father, I just pray that we wouldn't frustrate this grace that's extended, God, that you said for men to examine themselves, to see if they're in the faith, God. That, Father, I just pray for self-examination, God, even as you did to me today, God, to change things, to rearrange my heart, God, to see to see in the spirit realm and to touch the lives, God, that you desire for us to touch, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you. Amen. 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 Let's join our hands and hearts together and let's pray with one another. Take the hand of your neighbor nearby. Pastor Rhonda, would you come and would you pray over the congregation and pray over this service? and pray over Bishop, and, and let's just believe God. You know, I, I received the word of the Lord, a season of double grace, a season for transformational change that can come in our lives, that, that God wants to do something deep in us so he can do everything he wants to do through us. You know, this theme that the Lord's put in our hearts, Breakout 2020, God wants to, to come in and take those desert places in our lives and, and bring streams of living water so, so we're flourishing again. And so let's pray that into our neighbor, that, that God would cause them to flourish in every arena of their lives. Amen. Pastor Ron. Come on, let's lift our hearts up to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold your neighbor's hand and believe and touch and agree with them as you say these words and pray to our Father, lifting up our neighbor. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come to you thanking you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for who you are, God. We thank you, God, for Pastor Nick and his wife, God. We thank you for New Hope Church, God. We thank you for Pastor Karen. We thank you for all of those a part of this awesome ministry, God. And tonight, we lift them up to you, God. We pray that you will strengthen them. And then, God, we pray for Archbishop Willie Bolden, my husband, God, that you will touch and speak to his heart, God, whisper in his ear and in his heart of what you want to say to your people, God. Oh, Father, we lift up every single person here. God, the neighbor's hand that everyone is holding. We pray right now, Father, that they will have no lack no limitations and no disease we thank you god for your grace hallelujah your favor god that is extended god not only this year the beginning of this year and the rest of our life god we thank you for that favor we thank you for that grace god oh god we pray right now father god that the people in this house father will believe you hallelujah will not doubt you for what you're about to do in their lives god we thank you even tonight that some of the dreams that they've had are going to break out and be uncovered, God. The cobwebs are going to be taken off of dreams tonight, God. We give you praise, God, for, for everything that you put inside of your people, the hand of the neighbor that they're holding, God. That their, their hope will be restored at New Hope Church, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we speak against the enemy right now that has tried to kill our dreams, that has hide, tried to make us think that you've forgotten us. And God, you're a faithful God. You're an awesome God. And we thank you, God, for not leaving or forsaking us. We pray a grace in this house. We thank you for your favor untold, God. We bless your name tonight, God. And we ask you, Father, to please have mercy on us. Oh, God, we love you and we adore you. We put no one before you. And we thank you, God, for our future is bright. Oh, God, we thank you for doing exceeding and abundantly. Above all, we may ever ask or think, but it's according to the power that worketh within us. Let your people tonight not give up on their dreams. Let your people tonight not give hope, give up hope on you, God. You're able to do anything but fail. Oh, God, let us be restored in our faith tonight. Oh, God, the people that are in this house, I don't care what age they are, continue to strengthen their faith and their hope in you because you said in your word your ho our hope will not be disappointed if we hope in you hallelujah hallelujah we give you praise God we honor you father and Lord tonight we want to take all the limits off 
everything that we have put limits on you, Father. You're wanting to blow our minds this year and the rest of our lives. Have your way in your people. Have your way in our lives. We thank you, God. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. We dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on your Jesus' name. On, on Christ, the solid rock, we stand. We stand on your word tonight, God. Bless your people like never before. We trust you. The enemy wants us to think you're not real, but God, you are so real. And you have proven yourself to us tonight. Lord, take us to another dimension in you. No limits. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In the mighty and awesome name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice to him and lift your hands to him. Lift those hands to the air. Hallelujah. Come on, give it up to him. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, don't stop. Don't stop. Lift those hands to him. Oh, we honor you. Come on, love on him with your mouth. Hallelujah. The word says that I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouth. I thought it was awesome for me to be able to bless the Lord. He don't need anything from me, but my mouth can bless him. Come on, open your mouth. God, I love you. Tell him, love on him. God, I thank you. God, I adore you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for being dependable. Thank you that you're trustworthy. Thank you for not letting me down. Thank you for being there for me when others walked away. Come on, bless him tonight with the fruit of your lips. Don't look at me. Bless him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Bless him. You can't give him nothing else but praise. Come on, bless him. Hey, Oh, we love you, Jesus. Sometime I blow God a kiss. If you want to blow him a kiss, do it. Come on. Oh, yabodo sanda yabo sa ya yarabo sa. Yeah, 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 bo sanda yarabo so da ma sha. Oh, yeah, 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 bo sa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. I hope you came to church tonight. I hope you're ready for, for something special tonight. All right, come on, turn to two or three people. Give a handshake, a hug, a love in the Lord. Love on somebody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so good to have you here. So good to have you here in the house of the Lord at New Hope Church. I know we've got some folks visiting with us for the very first time. If it is your first time at New Hope Church, would you mind just to lift a hand so we can acknowledge our visitors over here? God bless you. God bless you. We welcome you. And it's your first time, isn't it? Yeah. Deborah, have you been before? At New Hope. It couldn't have been too many years ago. We've only been here five years. Yeah. <clears throat> We're delighted to have you here. Our, our ushers just gave our first-time visitors a little welcome brochure. It'll just tell you a little bit about the church here. Inside that brochure is a card. That helps us get to know you. I promise you we're not going to harass you in any way. We're not going to put you on a mailing list or any of that stuff. But I will give you a call and ask you um, if you felt loved and welcomed when you came in this church. And if you need prayer, 
or if you have any questions about the church, we'd love to have that opportunity to connect with you. And even if you're visiting here because you're here for uh, to hear Bishop, uh, I'd just let, like to make a connection with you. So um, I'll give you a call during the week if you turn in one of those cards. Uh, the offering basket will come around a little bit. Take that card, wrap a $100 bill around it, put it in the offering basket. No, you're our guest tonight. You're our guest tonight. God bless you. Um, we do welcome you, and we're so glad to have you here. We're so delighted um, to have uh, Bishop uh, Willie and uh, Pastor Rhonda Bolden with us, and I'll introduce them officially in just a moment, but we're just excited to have them. A couple of things that are coming up here. Um, tomorrow night, we're going to gather again at 6 p.m. to have our final prayer, worship, and testimony time to conclude our 21-day Daniel fast. And how many of you have been participating in some form or fashion? You've been, look at that, most of the people, God bless you, God bless you. Look, you know, fasting is powerful, and God does things when we deny our flesh to seek him in the spirit. And so uh, I, I hope that you'll come tomorrow. You know, we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the, and the word of our testimony. So I'm hoping that you'll come tomorrow because we're going to have open mic. Pastor Tracy's going to lead us in about 20 minutes of worship, about 20 minutes, upbeat praise, hallelujah, shouting uh, praise and worship. And then we're going to open up the mic and we're going to pray. We're going to testify. God's going to speak. He'll give some people some words. So he'll give you a scripture. And we're going to have a, just a glorious time. And then let's all go to the steakhouse and get a nice porterhouse steak, medium, with a baked potato and lots of butter. Help me, Jesus. You notice I haven't been eating any meat with you guys. And I've been taking these guys out to eat, you know, since they got in and uh, been eating my fruit and my salad. And I've been a good boy. Help me, Jesus. Give me grace. All right. So another thing that's coming up is our um, membership class, uh, and that's coming up on Saturday, February the 1st from 9 to 1.30. And if you've been coming to the church for a little while, uh, I want to encourage you to come to that class. There's no obligation, but I'm a firm believer that you, it's not only important to believe. Believing gets you into heaven. Belonging helps get heaven into you. When you connect with other believers in a covenant commitment, and that's what that class is about. I'm going to talk about the church, who we are, why we're here, what our vision and mission is, our philosophy of ministry, our doctrine. You know, you'll, you'll get a full load. It's like drinking out of a fire hose for about four hours or so. Uh, but I, I promise you, you'll be blessed if you come. I need you to register for that class. Take a Connect card and just put down membership, and that will register you for the class. Um, Another little special event that's going to take place tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock. Uh, Bishop Willie will, will talk just a minute about this in a little bit, but he has an opportunity for people who uh, need a little extra income. Anybody in the church need a little extra income? Yeah, a few of you do. Good. The rest of you are loaded. Boy, the offering should be really good tonight. <laughs> God bless you. Praise God. Um, but it's a, it's a business opportunity that uh, he's been involved with. It has blessed him and his family. And he's going to share it with anybody who has an interest. How long is that meeting going to be? About 45 minutes to an hour. It'll be in the cafe, 3 o'clock. So if you're interested, you can come on. Um, what else? I think that's enough. We're going to receive our tithes and offerings. And, and for those of you that are visiting or church family, we're going to receive two offerings tonight. The first offering is our tithe and offering for the church family. It helps us do the work of the ministry that God's called us to do. At the end of the service, we're going to receive an offering for Bishop Willie to sow seed into him uh, and his ministry. So let's prepare our hearts to give. Uh, if you weren't here last week, you need to listen to the message from last week. Pastor Tom shared on giving. It was one of the best messages I've ever heard on giving. And it's online on the website, on the church app. I would encourage you to do that. It'll encourage you in your giving. Well, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give tonight. Lord, receive these gifts, Lord, with our great thanks. Thank you for the privilege and the honor to sow seed into 
the work of the ministry here at New Hope. Glorify your name through our giving, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there, there's lots of ways that I could introduce Bishop Willie Bolden. He's a bishop of bishops. He's uh, pastoring, uh, well, actually, Ron, Pastor Rhonda is pastoring the church. She was installed about a year or two ago to pastor the church at the well. He's planted churches in Fort Wayne, Indiana, here in Tampa, Florida, in Atlanta, in, in California. He's an overseer of an international ministry of bishops and pastors. Uh, he's, um, he moves in the prophetic. Uh, God's gifted him as he lays hands on people for the miraculous. I could introduce him all of that way, but I'm going to introduce him as my friend. Uh, I've known a bishop for 30, about 36, 35, 36 years. When I went to the first uh, CMI conference, I had the privilege of meeting him and uh, uh, been so encouraged. Uh, when uh, he was planning the church in Tampa, uh, I was a, an associate at Countryside Christian Center, and uh, we went and did door-to-door -door witnessing. And my mom and brother said they would only go if they could go with you. <laughs> and they, did, they sure did. Yeah, I know. I know. And, uh, and God used it, and it was a blessing, and he's been a blessing to me personally and to our family. Please help me to welcome Bishop Willie Bull as he comes to share the word of the Lord. Praise God. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, he's worthy. God is worthy, worthy, worthy of our praise. I'm so thankful for all of you, uh, and thank you for Pastor and uh, his wife and family and the, the, the ministerial uh, staff here for this invitation to come and to share with you this week. I'm excited about what the Lord has put on my heart uh, to share with you. I'm going to share a message tomorrow morning that you do not want to miss. I'm going I'm to preach on tomorrow, access denied, denied, access denied. Uh, I want to talk about the stones that were upon the priests and the stones that were upon Lucifer. And a lot of people don't know that they, they, they were similar, but there were some stones that were missing on Lucifer. And that was purpose, the reason it was missing. And tomorrow I'm going to tell you why. So you need to be here and hear that, that message tomorrow because God's got something special for each and every one of you. I, I want to introduce my wife uh, to, uh, tonight. I know you've heard her pray, but I want to just come and, and uh, greet you. Uh, I always greet her a certain way, but if you all, can I feel at home? Every day the sun comes up around her. She can make the birds sing harmony. Every drop of rain is glad it found her. Heaven must have made her just for me. She smiles so warm and tender. A sight for so eyes to see. Ain't no woman like the one I got. Come on, baby. <laughs> oh. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Amen. God is good, isn't he? He is off the chain. He does everything. And I just um, want to thank God for the invitation for my husband and I being here, my baby. Yes. I call him Baby Bishop. <laughs> And I prayed 15 years for a husband, so God sent him. We, we celebrated our fifth wedding anniversary, January 21st. Amen. So give God a hand for that. Yes. Fasted and prayed. Yes. And so um, a lot of um, women I met yesterday at the women's uh, conference, it was awesome, Pastor Karen and many others. So I just thank God for all of you and looking forward to tomorrow, a great time in the Lord as well, and this awesome word that's going to be tonight. God bless you. Woo, I feel like preaching myself. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Also want to thank God for, uh, I want y'all to help me welcome Pastor Johnson. And, uh, and Bishop Dawson. So I want, just want to uh, uh, thank them for coming out and sharing with this uh, meeting. I want, to, I want to invite them uh, to, they have a fellowship meeting of pastors on Monday. Uh, what time is that? 10 a.m. They're going to have a breakfast and the whole nine yards. So we want to invite you guys. It'll be back here, here right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's Monday night, but it's going to be at 9.15. 9.15 for breakfast, 10 o'clock here. So I want to invite them to come back and share uh, with that. And that meeting also, again, he mentioned tomorrow 
uh, at three, I wanna, we want to invite you to come out if you're interested in making some, I mean, serious income. Uh, people are going, in, three, in 33 months, they're going from zero to millionaires. And, and, less, and one of the, uh, the biggest earner in this business lives here in Florida, and actually the, the business is located here in Davie, Florida. So come out, and we'll, I'm going to share with you tomorrow uh, uh, some of the, uh, uh, those things that are going in there. If you got your Bibles, and I know you do, turn it with me to Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. And I want to read a, a passage out of the 37th chapter. I'll read starting at verse 3 first, and, and then we'll come back, and I want to share some things from this, this passage. He said, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children, because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peacefully unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. So I, I want to talk about tonight, your dream will keep you alive. Yeah, this church has got a great name, hope, and we can tie hope and dream together. If you don't have a hope, if you don't have a dream, you can die early. I, I, wanna, I know what happens in Florida, but I'm going to ask you, don't retire, refi it. Because it's, 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 it's that dream that keeps you alive. I'm, I'm reading a book, and if you've never read this book, you need to read it. it it's it's uh, by uh, David Swartz, and it, it's The Magic of Thinking Big. It's a powerful book called The Magic of Thinking Big. And one of the things he talks about in this is a story of a lady that they told that she was terminally ill, that she had a cancer, that she would die within weeks or months. But she decided that she wanted to see her grandchildren graduate from college. She had a dream. She said, I want, I want to see my grandkids graduate from college. She lasted 20 more years. <laughs> and she watched her last grandkid graduate from college. And then like six weeks later, she died. But she stayed alive until her dream was fulfilled. You, there, there, there's something about having something that's motivating you to live. A, a gentleman called me. He's in my church in Tampa. He, I mean, rather, uh, Fort Wayne. He called me and he said, he said, Bishop, they've given me two weeks to live. He said, and, I, he said, and I'm calling you to pray. I said, well, okay, uh, let me tell you something. You shall live and not die. And uh, they gave him two weeks to live, and that was five years ago. That was five years years ago because I, I spoke to him and told him what you need to do. I'm coming back to Fort Wayne. I'm getting ready to start a, uh, uh, the, the church up again, and I need you there as an elder and as a leader. So he had a new dream. And the dream fired him up and kept him alive. A lot of times when you give a, uh, you know, what, what you got to understand something about God that when God gives you a dream, I want you to hear this, when God gives you a dream, what God does first is he finishes the dream. Then he comes and gets you. And he starts with you what he's already finished. He never, ever give it to you until it's finished. Wow. Y'all missed that one. I say, God, when God does something, he finishes it first. And once he finishes, he then he bags up and starts with you. That's why he said the steps of a righteous man, they are ordered by the Lord. The Lord is going to take you through. Now, what you got to understand is that when God, between the giving of a dream and the completion of a dream, you're going to have a lot of obstacles. Yes. There are things that God told me, if he, and he told me to do it. If, if he'd have showed me what I was going to go through, he never would have got me to move. Yeah, yeah I missed that one. <laughs> he never would have got me to move. If he if had showed me what I was going to experience, for instance, uh, I, I, I was pastoring here, and uh, my church grew in Tampa. Uh, uh, the, the church decided they wanted to buy me a, a limousine. I didn't ask for it. They wanted to buy me one. And so we, we, we had a limousine. God speaks to me and says, I want you to go to Los Angeles, and I want you to start another church in Los Angeles. So I left all I had here, went out to Los Angeles to start a church. I find myself riding on a bicycle 
y'all missing this, riding on a bicycle with all of my clothes on the way to a laundromat to wash my clothes on a laundromat, walk, uh, driving, uh, riding the bicycle down Western Avenue, which is one of the major streets in Los Angeles. If God had showed me that, he wouldn't have got me to move. <laughs> you see, so there are things that you're going to experience in your dream. And here's the case. Here's, here's what you got to understand. The reason God does not tell you all about the stuff because the stuff doesn't matter. The only thing that matters to God is what he said and the completion of what he said. Yes. So if God has given you a dream, he's given you a vision, you're going to complete it, and nothing you're going to experience will stop you from finishing that dream as long as you stay faithful to God. Now, now I want to look at some things about the dream. Number one, dreams are developed in relationships. That means having love, giftings, dreams, and also in the middle of that, you're going to have some opposition. So God gave him a dream. You saw that. I read that. He got, gave, you, gave him a dream. Then next of all, his brothers hated him for it. So you're going to have, some, have some, uh, some problems the moment you, you say, I got something from God. There's no way you're going to go through without some storms. I was talking to your pastor, and he was sharing with me some of the storms that he's been through. But the thing of it is, those storms were preparation for where he was taken. <laughs> y'all better y'all hear me. All of the storms, everything that you went through, was uh, uh, they were not defeats. They were lessons learned. Yes. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me? They were not defeats. Even in your private life, you've been through some things. But it were not defeats. It was lessons learned. Now, look at verse 6. It says, and he said unto them, here I pray you this dream, which I dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose and stood upright, and behold, your sheep stood around about and made obedience to my sheep. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion? Now, I want to tell you something else about your dream. Dreams are, are a glimpse at your potential. A dream or hope is not something you've already accomplished. There's something in you that God knows that can come out of you that you don't know can come out of you. And so he gives you a glimpse of this thing. He gives you a view of it before you ever step out on it. It's your potential. And you got to understand that that potential and the, the dream that you're going through is going to cause others to, to hate you. For no other reason than you had a dream. <laughs> that, that, that's the only reason. That you had some vision that was going to take you to another place. People like for you to remain the same. We're we just going to all stay right here and sing, come by ya. <laughs> when God has something far greater for you. And, and you have to be able to see this thing, a glimpse of it. Before you ever take off and start doing it, you got to see a glimpse of it. That's my dream. So, so Joseph saw where he wanted to be. He saw exactly where he, would want, he wanted to be, but it was not where he was then. And I want you to see that. When God speaks to you, a lot of time you're going through things that's completely opposite of what he's shown you. David was anointed to be king and was tending sheep. God sometimes puts you in a situation. I remember when I was, uh, I started off in ministry with Dr. Paul E. Pano. And I could find myself shoveling snow around the, the church and cleaning out the toilets and doing it. And, I, and, and all of that, I was saying, you know, there's a day coming that God's going to take me around the world. And I'm going to minister in places around the world. One of my friends, he came to me not too long ago. He said, Bowling, he said, we used to laugh at you. He said, when you were running around talking about you were going to do this and you were going to do that, we were laughing at you. He said, but bowling, we're not laughing anymore. <laughs> because God has permitted me the same, same feet and hands that were cleaning out toilets. Kings have now bowed down to my feet for counsel. Kings of nations have bowed down and asked me to give them direction. Because I had a dream beyond what I was doing. Some of you in this room, you can't hardly see yourself. I've gotten off of planes in places 
where they meet me, the heads of state meet me at the plane. The same guy that was cleaning out toilets and shoveling snow. The, the same man. The same man. Not a different man. So God has something for you, and it's far greater than what you're doing right now. And you got to get a glimpse of it. And listen, don't talk about I'm old. The Bible said about Joseph, he dreamed another dream. You, you got to come to the place that you keep dreaming. Now, here's something else that, that's important. Always hated this, this, this verse. I did. I hated it, and I hold it, but almost hated it was in there. But it, verse 9, sorry, verse 9. He said, and he dreamed yet another dream, and he told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I dream a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obedience to me. He's talking about his parents. And he told it to his father and his brother. And his father's re father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou dream? Shall I and thy brother, mother and thy brethren indeed come bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brothers envied him, but his father observed the same. Here, here's the next thing I want to tell you about your dream. You can't share it with everybody because there are spiritual abortionists in the church. Let me say that again. There are spiritual abortionists in the church. They are waiting for you to expose your baby where they can kill it. You only share your dream with people who have grown spiritually themselves and are mature and have experienced some other things themselves. He shared it to his brother, and his brothers wanted to kill him. He shared it to his daddy. Notice this. He shared it to his daddy, and his daddy rebuked him. But he, listen to what he did. The Bible said he pondered it. He, he started thinking. The, dad, the father started thinking about it. Because, you know, Joseph, I mean, Jacob had a crazy dream himself. He saw, the, he saw a ladder going from heaven to earth, and he saw angels ascending and descending down. So dreamers understand dreamers. You cannot share it with everybody. You have to share it with your spiritual leaders. People who may not still yet understand what you see. But they will ponder it because they are dreamers themselves. Yeah. Sometimes God will tell us things that doesn't make sense to the common mind. Let me tell you something about God. God will always, God, God will tell you sometimes things, listen to this. He will tell you things that, that are never impossible to do. But they are irrational. Let me say them again. God will tell you many things, and they are not impossible for you to do it. It's just irrational. It doesn't make sense to the natural mind. I was building my church in, 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 in Fort Wayne, and I went to, my, I went to the bank to, to get the money, and they were going to loan me enough money to fail. And, and, and uh, I hear God said, go play golf. I said, go play golf? Now, I can go play golf. But that's irrational. Uh, Y'all ain't hearing that. That's irrational. Why in the world would I go play golf at a time I got a need? So I go play golf. And we're on the first tee. And this man asked me, he said, he said what, what do you do? I said, well, I'm a pastor. He said, well, pastor, what kind of uh, things got you got going on? I said, well, I'm trying to build a church, but I've been to uh, my bank, and, and they, they, they turned me down. They're not going to give me all I need to get the, the loan. He said, what you going to do now? I said, well, I was praying, and God has spoken to me and said, I need to go around the corner to this other bank and put an application in. And the man looked at me, and he said, you know, that's a tremendous idea. I'm the chairman of the board. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah, you missed that. You missed that. You missed that. Now, it was irrational for God to say, go play golf. When I got down here, I got ready to, uh, I bought a, a, a building, 50,000 square foot. And it, it, 12 acres of land over in Tampa. And God told me, he said, take the man out for breakfast and tell the man to give you the keys to go in and start repairing the building before you sign a paper or give him anything. And I said, who's going to give you the keys to a building to do this for? So I obeyed God to a point. <laughs> I, 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 I took the man out to breakfast, but I added something. I said, sir, if you would allow me to come in and start doing what I need to do in the building, I, I, will, I, I will not only give, what, give you what you're asking for, but I will also give you a tax write-off for an additional amount of money. 
And he looked at me and he said, he said, Pastor, have you ever heard of Alfonso Capone? I said, Al Capone? He said, yes, Al Capone. He said, Al Capone was of Italian descent. He said, and so am I. And he said, ever since Al Capone, every Italian want to pay all of his taxes. He'll take the key and go do what you need to do. <laughs> you see, God will tell you something. So, so your dreams sometimes don't make sense. But if he said it, he will perform it. If he promised you it. Now, listen to this. In, in the 14th verse, he said, and he said unto him, go, I pray thee, and see whether it, will, it, it be well with thy brethren and well with the flock, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron and, and came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, what seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brother, and tell me, I pray thee, where they, they feed their flocks. And the man said, they have departed from here. And, and, and I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren, and he found them. Here's the next thing I want to talk, talk to show you about our dream. You've got to start listening to people that God put in your life. Because a season, listen to this. When people talk about my season change. Seasons change by the, by the entering and exiting of people. Let me say it again. Your, your season will change by people coming into your life and going out of your life. That's how you'll see, you know your season of change. This man showed Joseph the direction to his destiny. He said, I heard they were going down this direction. There are people that God's going to put in your life. When you get out and you're just trying to find the will of God, just trying to do what God called you to do, and yet you don't know all that he wants you to do. Some of them sitting right here today. This lady, this young girl right here, she's about, she's about 80 years old. But she, 81. She, made, she cleared me up. I'm like 81. <laughs> she, she was one of the people who came down when I started the church in Tampa. Yes, walked the streets. So, so with the pastor and, and his brother and others, they came and they walked the street with me. Helped me in the direction that God was pointing me to. God will always put people in your life. And, and you got to trust. That's why you have to have relationships. You can't break down relationships. I, I can't afford to lose anybody out of my life. Because I don't know when God's going to use them to point me in the right direction. Oh, are y'all hearing me? There are times that God's going to speak to people and their purpose and their, and their direction for you. They're going to show you where you need to be now, your next place. Listen, he had not yet reached the dream. But he was moving in the right direction. And, and, and sometimes, listen, when they give you direction, you find yourself going through a hardship and you think you miss God. Because after he found his brothers, he, he didn't get what he was looking for. But he was moving in the right direction. I come tonight to tell you some of you are going through some hardship right now. But you're moving in the right direction. And as long as you keep going in that direction, you will reach your goal. It's amazing because he was, he was trying to get to Egypt. I just did my DNA, and I found out that I am a descendant of Pharaoh Ramses III. <laughs> so so, 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 so th th he was moving in the direction. His, 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 his direction was to take him where he was needed. Let me tell you that right now. Whatever it is that's going to be your blessing is because you want to fulfill the need of somebody else. There's something in you. Everybody that was born, you were born for a purpose to be the answer to somebody else's problem. And when you recognize I am the answer, like my, my, my brother came up here and he was sharing, that he had to, to regroup some things, he had to reshift some things because he found out that that wouldn't take him toward his purpose. You have to regroup sometimes when you're looking for that purpose. But he didn't miss it. <laughs> he didn't miss God. It was just a difficult situation. Now, here's, here's some of the things that you're going to go through uh, before, before you get 
to your place, your test of a, your place of arrival. Number one, in verse 20, that's going to be an effort to destroy you. Let's kill it. Before you be feel a purpose, the enemy is going to try to destroy you before you get there. My, my, not only have I had threats in my life since I've been here, but they tell me, I, you know, of course, I'm, I don't know. They tell me that my mother died with me in childbirth. And the father came into the room and laid hands on her and resurrected her. That's why the, the, that gift works in me. <laughs> she came, laid hands on her, resurrected her. I, I, I kind of look back at that sometime. I think he probably said a few times, I wish she'd have came and he could have, because <laughs> I caused him so much pain. No, no, he didn't, didn't. He believed all the way into his death that God had a call on my life. And no matter what I did, he knew that God was going to bring this thing to pass. So number one, uh, you, your test before you arrive, you arrive is that you're going to have an effort to destroy you. And then here's the, here's the next thing, verse 22 you're going to find yourself in a dry place. You're going to find yourself in a dry place. You're looking for flourishing to flourish, but you're going to find yourself in a very dry place, a place that's completely opposite of what you've seen. They end up putting in a cistern, in a well that was dry. Some of you are going to find yourself on the way to your vision, on the way to your goal, on the way to your dream, you're going to find yourself in a dry place. Nothing is happening for you. And yet you know God spoke to you. I know that God has spoken, but I find myself in this dry place. That's, that's the second thing that you're going to find. Then notice it, verse 23, they ripped off his coat. There are going to be some loss on the way. Now, I'm going to catch this. This coat was a coat of many colors. But those sons knew exactly what that coat meant. That coat meant this is a person of favor. He is now going to rule over our family. And so the first thing they did was take that coat away from him. When they saw him, they, were, they stripped him of that coat. Some of you in this room, you've lost a lot of stuff. You lost wife, you lost children, you lost houses, you lost a lot of things. But let me tell you something, that's not all bad. Let me explain why. You see, he took the coat from Joseph, but they took the coat off of Joseph because Joseph cannot wear two coats. They only saw the first part of his destiny, ruling the family. God had another destiny that he was going to rule over nations. So listen, whatever you've lost in your life, God permitted that to happen because he's taken you to a larger place. He's taking you to something greater than what you had. It was not, what you had was not enough. What you had was not going to give you what you need. So God took that coat off of you, allowed you to go through hard places, dry places, not having what you, the monies you need, everything else you needed. He took the coat off because he had another coat ready for you yeah. that you're going to rule over nations. And so there are some of you that are sitting here, you've been through some stuff. I come to tell you tonight, just because you went through loss, it does not mean that the dream is over. Yeah. It only means that God has something even greater for you than you ever thought. Then the next thing is bondage. He put in bondage, soul in slavery. I want you to catch this. He's going to the right place. He's going in the right direction. <laughs> but, but some, you know, see, this is God's leading. Sometimes we want, we want to jump from here over there. But everything that God does, God will never, listen to me carefully, God will never, ever, anything that you've had in your life, nothing you had in your life will be discharged or threw away. Everything that's been in your life, God going to use. Even your disappointments, he's going to use it. The scripture said, all things work together for good for those who love God and call according to his purpose. Now notice this, not all things are good. 
but all things work together for good. And for those who love God. That, that, that being in the, in the well was not good. Being sold into slavery is not good. But it was for his will. It was the purpose of God to get him to where he was going to bless him at. Some of you are going through some stuff. Some of you had to go through some divorces and, and all kind of things, deaths and whatever. But God was pushing you to where he wanted to get you to. There's some stuff he wanted to get you that you couldn't get where you were. And you had to go through a hardship to get there. Uh, then, then the next thing is you're going to be placed in a place of training. You're going to be placed where you can be trained. He was put in Potiphar's house. Where, see, Potiphar was a ruler. So here, God put him around things. If you want to you run a business or you want to do something, go work for somebody else first. He put him in a ruler's house that he could learn how to rule. All we focus on is the woman, you know, that he encountered in the house. But there was other lessons that he learned in the house. He learned a lot, a lot of things, what to do in the house, as well as he learned what not to do in the house. So, so everybody will have their part of a place. That, there'll be a place where God is going to train you. He's going to show you how to do what he's trying to take you to. I've had so many wonderful men in my life. John Lloyd. Paul Lee Paino, Bishop uh, Benson, Andrew Itahosa. These were men that God put in my life at, at, for a season of training to prepare me for where I was going. I used to sit on the platform and watch Dr. Paino put a message together sitting on the platform. And he would get up and preach such a profound message. I mean, I've been studying all week and going... But I learned from this powerful man. John Lord had, had a prayer life. I don't care what you may think about him, but that man knew how to get hold to God. Had a prayer life. And that drove me into a prayer life. I learned some stuff. Because God will place you in a place of training. You got to train before you get where you're going. And then, then also at Potiphar's house, God's going to test your character. God never, ever uses anything he doesn't test. And if you're going through a lot, that's good. Because you don't test a Volkswagen the same way you, you test a Rolls Royce. <laughs> so, some of you going to great places, and you need extra testing to get you where you're going. Some of the stuff I've been through, oh, my God. It's because of where God was going to take me. I talk about these, these, these men who rule nations come to me and say, listen, counsel me, pray for me, give me direction. Now, without the testing that I've been through, I wouldn't qualify. It's not the, just the knowledge I got. It's what I've been through. And God placed you in places. And if you're not a te teachable individual, I tell people all the time, I cannot help you if you're not fat. I only help fat people. As the only people I have, faithful, available, and teachable. <laughs> if you're not faithful, available, and teachable, I can't use you. I can't help you. So somebody's going to come. God's going to bring them. Then uh, here's the next thing God's going to do. He's going to place you in a place where you can use your gift to practice your gift. He ended up in prison. And remember the, the men came. And they said, listen, tell us what's going to happen to us. He got a chance to practice his gift. Some of you right here, God's got some greater things for you to do, but right now you're practicing your gift. Right here in this ministry. God placed you in this ministry to practice your gift. Man, I was so, I was so disappointed when God spoke to me, told me it was time to go preach. Because, man, I love, I, I would be getting up running to get to the house of God. I love to sit up on a Dr. Pano and let him preach the word to me. And so, I mean, I would sit there, I would, I would be, and then now all of a sudden he's telling me now it's time for you to go serve somebody else. I wasn't ready to go. I wanted to sit up under the word and just eat, 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 eat. But I had gotten fat. And so it was time to use some of the things that God had given me. And some of you, it's time for you to get up and use what God has given you. It's time for you to use it. Uh, now, how 
will I know I'm ready? How will I know I've arrived? You got to have a spirit of forgiveness. Remember the butler forgot him. After he did everything he did. There's a lot of people you're going to help. <laughs> and they're going to forget you. I was in a meeting not too long ago. Young man, he passes a church. And uh, he was telling his testimony. I'm sitting right there in front of him. Uh, the night that he got saved, he was on the way to commit suicide. But when I left Indiana to come to Florida, he got upset that I didn't give him the church. And he's had a problem with me for 30 some years. For 30 some years. So I'm standing, I'm there, he's giving his testimony, and he said, my brother and this young preacher led me to Jesus. He wouldn't even acknowledge my presence. That people, after you've helped them, they'll forget you. But the thing that you got to do is have the right spirit toward them. It doesn't matter what they think about you. It's what you think about them. It's your preparation. God is getting you prepared for where you're going. Don't allow what people do to you to stop you. They will impede your progress because you carry a spirit of unforgiveness. Then here's, here's the next thing. Your gift will be needed. The only way you can get to that place is somebody need what you got. Can I tell y'all something? How, how many got the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit you speak with other tongues? Listen, that's the only gift that you can find in the scripture that's for you. Every other gift is for, that you have is for somebody else. Everything else that you have, that, that one I can build myself up in my holy faith. I can pray in the spirit and build myself up. But any other gift, I, I lay hands on the sick. I've seen every kind of disease heal. I've seen the dead get up at my voice. I, I've, I've seen people walk that couldn't walk. I've seen people speak who could not speak. I, I've seen limbs grow. I've seen limbs diminish from being huge to small. Everything that you can think of as far as miraculous has happened in my ministry. But none of it was for me. It was for somebody else. I was in a place called, in Gary, Indiana, and this lady, she had a crippling, uh, crippling arthritis. And, her, and matter of fact, it was so bad that it had turned her leg the other direction. And God said, I want you to pray for her. And I said, I'm not praying for her. God said, I want you to pray for her. I said, I'm not praying. I don't want to pray for her. And the reason I was saying that is because my knee was hurting right then. <laughs> I got a pain going on right now. Now you want me to pray for her. And he, this is how he got me to do it. He said, I let you preach and you're a sinner. This ain't got nothing to do with you. This is about me. Pray for her. And I prayed for the lady, and I watched my God straighten her leg up right at the, at the altar, completely healed. My knee was still hurting. <laughs> you see, so God going to give you an opportunity to use your gift and realize that it is just that. It's a gift. It's not you. Every service, oh my gosh, I'm running. Every service, God tells, uh, tells me to end the service by saying the same thing. Everything that happened here today, it happened by the grace of God. He told me, he said, I'm going to do miracles in your life. And, and if you don't, you're not careful, people are going to start looking at you rather than looking at what the source is. Let me run through this quick. Then God going to uh, uh, use you to use your authority to help people and not to take revenge. Here's his brothers now in front of him. He got a chance to get them back for all the things they did to him. Can I tell y'all something tonight? If you're not ready to forgive the person who hurt you the most, you're not ready for that place God has taken you. If you're not ready to forgive them for everything they've done, no matter what it is, then you're not ready for the place that God has taken you. Uh, uh, listen to this. I'm about done. When you discover why you went through what you went through, then all things will work together for you to come to that place of receiving what God has for you. Joseph 
name the place. I want y'all to catch this. They told Joseph, said, you know, the, the dad was dead. He said, I know you're going to kill us now. You're probably going to kill us now because of what we did. And Joseph, he didn't let him off the hook. He said, everything you did, I know you did it for evil. But God did it for my good, that he could save a lot of people alive. And he named that place the place of God. He said, it, God did all of this to bring me to this place, the place of God. Everything you've been through and going through right now, there's a place God's trying to take you. Hang tight. The ride is not over. Thank you. Come on. Ooh, Aren't you glad you came to church tonight? That was a good word, Bishop. That was a good word. Hallelujah. And it's, it's just the beginning. Tomorrow there's more meat. And then Monday we get dessert. It's going to be a wonderful feast in the word of God this weekend. And I'm grateful and I received the word of the Lord. Receive that into your heart. I hope you took some good notes so that you can go over it and meditate on it and think through and pray through it. Amen? To activate the word of God in your life. We're going to close our service with uh, an offering, uh, an opportunity to sow seed into Bishop's life. Uh, I'm grateful that he accepted our invitation. I'm so thankful that he's here, he and Pastor Rhonda. And uh, I've received already, richly. I pray that you have too. I'm a firm believer that we should always pray before we give. We should always ask the Lord what he wants us to do with his stuff. You know, sometimes... People say, oh, we got a guest speaker. I'm going to put $5 in the offering, just a token gift. You know, it's what I'm used to doing. Don't do that. You're, you're missing out. First of all, maybe God don't want you to give that $5 bill. You ask the Lord what he wants you to do and listen, and he'll speak to your heart. There's a few ways that you're able to give. You can put cash in the offering. Uh, everything in this offering and what we receive tomorrow and Monday, all of that, we, we don't take any money off for any expenses. We, we, we give and we add to the offering. I, I learned that. I learned that from Pastor Lloyd and Bishop Pano. Uh, we, we, we always add. We sow more into it because we want to be partakers of the blessing. So uh, if you give a check, you can just uh, make it out to New Hope Church. You could put uh, BWB, Bishop Willie Bolden, BWB. Bolden you can put in. Bishop you can put in. But if it's in this basket, it's going to go to the offering that we're going to sow. Uh, church family, you can use the church app. And there's a place for, uh, is, there, is it say guest? Special project. So you can uh, put it in a special project. But let's pray. Let's ask the Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you for the word of the Lord tonight. Thank you for um, sowing into us, Lord, a word, God, that that is was moving and, and, and ministering to us, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for Bishop and, and Pastor Rhonda, and we pray, Lord, that you bless them. We pray, God, that you prosper them, spirit, soul, and body. And we pray, Lord God, that you would invest in them through us, Lord God. Use us tonight. So, Lord, we ask you, God, you have blessed us abundantly. What would you have us do? What would you have me do, Lord? Speak to me now. Lord, give me the courage to obey what you've just spoken to my heart. Thank you for the privilege of giving. We receive these gifts for your glorious name. Amen. God bless you as you give ushers. Please serve God's people. And once you've been served, um, you know, Bishop, I, I think we need to pray for people tonight before they go home. If any of you need prayer tonight, if you need healing in your body, if you need a touch from the Lord, I want to ask uh, Bishop, Pastor Rhonda, my pastors here, I want you to join me at the altar area here. And uh, we'll lay hands on you, and we'll believe God for your miracle. How about, how about a miracle for you tonight? Why, why can't it be your turn tonight? Uh, if you need a breakthrough, if there's just something you want us to agree with you in prayer for, we're going to lay hands on you. We're going to believe God, that God's going to touch you. I am so thankful that you came. I'm thankful, and I pray that you were blessed while you're here. And I pray that you will be blessed in your going. 
Lord, I just pray, God, your blessing on your people. I pray, Lord God, that there would be an impartation. God, we receive the word of the Lord, double grace, Lord God, a double portion, Lord God, to bring that transformational change into our lives. Lord, be honored and glorified, Father, in us and through us. Lord, as we leave this house tonight, God, use us to make a difference in the world out there. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Yeah, come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Let's bless the Lord tonight. If you need prayer, come on, and we'll be glad to pray with you. God bless you.